now we will discuss about the PRA report writing methods and uh, please uh, note that this is one of the most important step of a successful PRA exercise. Because at the end of a day, your entire PRA exercise outcomes need to go in the form of a report to policy makers, to decision makers. So, your PRA report need to be very, very efficient and at the same time, it should also give a good kind of experience for the people who will be reading your report. So, two key steps in case of PRA report writing methods we should remember. One is data analysis, the data that you will be getting during the process of PR exercise, various kind of data we have already discussed. You might get lot of numerical data and a lot more categorical data. So, you have to decide that what kind of uh, analysis for this data or information that you would like to carry out. Then comes uh, your report writing. Once data analysis is done, obviously you are going to get you know some tables, some, some figures. So, you need to interpret those. Now, in case of report writing, we sh should have the following parts like problem statement including the conceptual framework on what basis you started your exercise, purpose and scope, methodology that you have followed, the data and findings which will come from this data analysis exercise, implications of findings means interpretation of this data, then summary and finally, references and appendices. So, this kind of consolidated report needs to be prepared for a successful dissemination or outreach of your entire exercise. Now, the tools and techniques while actually carrying out this PR exercise that you will be using at the field level are various type of tools and techniques. And while you will be using certain techniques which are very core of this exercise, some other techniques may be useful at some point of time for some purposes and may not be useful for the other. So, the tools are either used by outsiders means people like us who are going into the village to extract the information or sharing or analysis or the tools can be used by the villagers also when you go for field visit by their own. So, in doing so, you are actually also enhancing the capacity of these people. So, there is no fixed order for using these tools or techniques that we will be discussing in a few minutes. As I said that it is useful not to depend on any standard protocols. It is a evolving and a dynamic process when you go for PR exercise and deal with the community. The team like us, we need to think throughout what makes the most sense given the information that is needed and the situation that it finds in the community. We must think about that. The process that we will be following undoubtedly it will evolve with time. So, you might find that that one way of handling an issue has worked today probably after two days it may not be working in that way. So, you need to evolve your process will be really situational from that point of view. Towards the beginning of the exercise the tools that you are going to use are largely to provide and generate general information and with the time when you advance in your PR exercise, you will find that you need to use more specific tools and techniques which we will be discussing very soon. So, once the you know study is completed and the data is collected, then you go for analysis and report writing as we just now discussed. Now, coming to the PRA techniques, then we will discuss about the tools that we need. PRA techniques can be broadly classified into three you know categories, methodological principle, PRA techniques and three organizational techniques. So, methodology and the PRA techniques, hardcore techniques for which there are various tools that we will discuss and then organizational techniques that you will be using while dealing with the community. Now, Coming to methodological principle means the first point we will be discussing now. 
within methodological principle visualization of the entire process is very very important and how do you do that through different kind of diagrams maps which can be created by the people in presence of you or you along with the people also jointly can come up with this kind of diagrams and map resource maps various other social maps then next is sequencing we talked just few minutes back about sequencing different peer tools are combined in a specific order to achieve the goals of the peer exercise so as i said that a uh, building a rapport or relationship with the people enhancing their capacity these are also some of our objectives within pra so sequencing on the basis of the objective that you have in mind are also important optimal log ignorance we have discussed about triangulation also we have discussed just few minutes back next comes the pra techniques what are the techniques which uh, often found very useful at the field level nothing can replace direct observation means observation like what you see when where who why and how these are the basic questions or observations that will directly come into the peer exercise outcomes list do it yourself the participants the communities will need to be encouraged to teach the researcher how to do various activities it is not always the other way around researcher also will learn how much skill and strength are required to do day to day rural activities because then only we will also appreciate and understand the struggle the issues that the community they face gaining an insider perspective on a real situation is very very important for a successful peer exercise so we also need to test the life day to day life of the community at least for some time then participatory mapping and modeling we need to use the local materials sometime you can use some you know powders soil different color of soil plants so these are kind of local material can be used villagers can draw the resource map on the floor of suppose a temple temple at the ground of the temple or a village office panchayat office in front of that also they can make it so using local material they can also come up with some kind of mapping and modeling the villagers themselves then it comes to transect works we discussed it earlier also transect or guided field works here we the conductor of peer exercise will go along with the villagers and have a transect walk across the area rural area listen to the people talk with the people find the resources available there and record through various way notebook photographs if you have carrying out gps note down the gps you know lat long coordinates so all this information during the transect walk is a wonderful feeling in fact you can build your rapport also with the entire community or the village then next comes seasonal calendar very very important because seasonal calendar talks about rainfall labor income type of you know your crops and uh, you know seasonal pests seasonal diseases all those information will be there ultimately this information will be required for making certain decision then you comes for daily activity profiles well researcher can explore and compare the daily activity patterns of men versus women youth elder and then because this exercise also will provide that how much time how much time and energy that each individual uh, and different uh, uh, people from different gender different ages are actually putting behind in their you know community life then comes uh, interview interview we talked about structured and semi structured interview in case of pra we generally go for structured interview but semi structured interviewing and listening technique also sometime use to get a pulse of your uh, community that you are interacting with so different types of uh, sequencing and chains of interviews are used at individual level by making pair or groups interviews are combined in a sequence to take advantage of key informants and special groups then comes timelines 
timelines actually is a major historical kind of a record of events and changes that has taken place especially suppose if you are going to analyze some area about some aspects of impact of climate change in that area certainly you need a historical background of that area so timelines help for that local history is important and it is almost you know similar to timelines but local history give a more detailed account that how something has changed over a decade or over a you know century in that particular locality then comes your local researchers and village analysts they play important role with little bit of training from your end local people can actually conduct research themselves which actually create you know a sense of ownership among them and you end up getting a much better outcome of your pr exercise than you yourself doing some of the analysis then comes venn diagrams we discussed it quite a lot it shows the relationships um, between various things between uh, you know overlapping circles which are used to present people village institutions etc participatory diagramming yes people we often in peer exercise encourage them to display their knowledge by drawing various kind of diagrams etc to express that uh, the status of resources or the struggle that they are facing to maintain the natural resources or other resources within their community next comes wealth and well being rankings very very important we mentioned it just uh, in the previous uh, module also people here you know what is that the participants of the community here often asked to sort some kind of slips or cards that as a conductor you will be providing to them so representing this community representing various individuals or household from different economic status will actually select those uh, slip this technique it can be used for cross checking the information about their wealth or financial status that you have got while having probably transact work in the village or interacting with them so what are the different methods of ranking we have we have direct matrix pair wise ranking and scoring methodology so in case of matrices matrices we can use to gather information or to facilitate or focus the analysis and discussion for an example suppose a problem opportunity matrix could have columns with a uh, different aspect like soil type land use cropping patterns available resources and rows with you know following levels like problems constraints local solutions initiatives that already tried so that's the way you can create a matrix which actually will help you to lead to a ranking of different aspect or different problem and corresponding solutions traditional management systems and local resource collections what we do here local people actually means the community they will collect samples for example soil sample plant sample and this can be an efficient way to learn about the local biodiversity and how they can be managed they probably also will come to know that how two different plant can be differentiated on the basis of their taxonomical features so in a sense that during this exercise we not only get the information but also you know build the capacity of the community remember that that i said in previous module pr exercise one of the major objective is to build the capacity of the people community so that when the project period is over when the external agency or the outsiders go out of the village they should be in a position to take care of their own village because that is the sustainability of any initiative that is that is being taken up by government or any organization next comes portraits profiles case studies and stories very very important tools here what happened that household different household has different kind of history in the in the village level if any one of you are from village you will definitely know it what i am trying to mean there will be different kind of stories you know different kind of events that how certain you know things conflict or certain things was resolved among themselves how two household actually fought with each other for one kind of natural resources say water 
or say good piece of uh, land or something this can actually provide uh, you know kind of a insightful you know descriptions or characteristics of a certain community and how actually they finally end up solving a issue or problem among themselves so then comes the key problem that you have to get from the people it's a question addressing a key issue that you will be asking or you will be trying to find out from the community and these questions one single questions can be asked to various you know informants or various individuals to find out that when you ask the same questions to four people whether you get four different answer or you get the same answer in a sense that you actually cross check a key issue by asking more than one person because that is important for us to know in PRA exercise that what are the key problems of course after that we will go for different tools and techniques of ranking of those issues which I have already discussed. Mm -hmm.